Hey guys, welcome to Joe Seminar Presents. I'm Joe Seminar. So today's topic is going to be survival mode in these uncertain times of filmmakers coming up next. A video that just might help you think in another direction and get revenue for your film. Let's talk about uh, several revenue streams that filmmakers, okay? So let's just say that you're creative and you got your film and you, and you got it distributed. There's a couple of areas that you can go to, right? A lot of people go to Amazon, you might go to Hulu, you might go to Google Play, you might go to uh, 2B TV, wherever you can get your film in. Uh, but let's talk about what's happening with those outlets. Now, if you haven't heard the news with with the whole Amazon Prime thing, with, with the CER ratings and rankings and everything else that they're doing now, they've actually lowered what they're giving the filmmakers. So it's really frustrating because every time you turn around, you know, Amazon was such a great asset to filmmakers and still is, but they are just making it super, super difficult for filmmakers to, to, to recoup on their investment. Now, if, they, if you don't have a, a, a CER ranking of at least 49%, meaning 49% of your movie within the hours being watched, as a filmmaker, you're only gonna get about a cent, one penny for that whole hour. And it's crazy because, you know, you might look at, you know, if your movie streams a million minutes a, a week, not that bad, right? But at a penny, you're, you're not really making any money. So what, what we've always done and what, what I've always done over the years is always align my films with some sort of product placement. Um, and, and I've talked about that a while ago. We have a course on it. But, you know, you should always think in terms of, you know, your distribution outlet's going to get you some gravy at the end of the, uh, the end of the trail. But you should always be making some money on product placement. Anything you do... Uh, in a movie, it has product placement. Whether you pick up this Poland Spring bottle, they could be a potential sponsor. Okay, you don't think you're going to get Poland Spring because they're a big company and you're just an independent filmmaker? Fine. Then go and find a new beverage company that just emerged the same year you're rolling out with your film. Uh, and chances are they have a marketing budget and you could align yourself and maybe build a relationship with that particular brand. So product placement is key. Uh, is key when, when, when people are making movies and a lot of filmmakers don't think of it like that. They think, well, it's, you know, it's not TV. TV, you know your audience, you know where it's going to air, you can tell that to the sponsor. Well, no, if you have a, a, a good distribution platform and you've made a good PDF, a good media kit that, that specifies where your movie is going to go, you could sell that sponsorship on that as well. So I, I don't believe that garble that, well, you know, movies are different than TV when it, when it comes to product placement because it's up to the salesperson. It's not up to the, it, it has nothing to do with whether or not it's a movie or if it's a TV. Product placement is product placement. You know, not only that, but everything down for the toothbrush, everything down to the, the vehicle that's being driven. You have to be creative and look at your movie or, or in most cases your script it's okay, well, how can I, you know, put in some sort of a product placement in there? Because I, I think that filmmakers really need to uh, start establishing this because times are about to get a little difficult with the payout. Um, and these, you know, even though there's new distribution platforms that emerge all the time, uh, product placement is, has always been and always will be a great revenue source for filmmakers. And I, and I don't think that filmmakers should ignore that as well. Um, you know, even even down to the location. Okay, now granted, you know, the, you know, you can get a hair salon, you can get a nail salon, you can get a restaurant. A anybody and everybody can be a product placement sponsor. Uh, and just like your actors, when you go into scene to scene, room to room, place to place, building to building, those potential things and places can be a, a product placement sponsor. What's a good amount to charge? Well, you know, between a thousand to five thousand dollars per product placement, whatever you got. I, I don't say go to bed with them and don't get married to, to them, where you have to so you know share your stuff on social media ten times a week and all that crazy stuff. You know, don't. Sometimes a bad client, you have to walk away, no matter how much money's on the table. So establish that you know you're willing to give back to the sponsor what what you can, and and if you need to bend over backwards and make it really difficult. 
you know, move on to the sponsor or set your parameters a little bit different. So let's say you're doing a $2,000 product placement sponsor where, you know, the main actor is going to basically hold the, the logo up and drink this water. And he's not going to say anything, just very nonchalant. All right, great. Let's head over there. And, and, and the logo has been displayed the entire time on camera. Uh, and that's going to be the justifiable uh, product placement. So, you know, start thinking like that and you can build up $10,000 levels. You can build up $20,000 levels. Uh, I don't think you're going to get more than a $30,000 level because uh, that seems to be uh, people who have an established platform and established distribution. But really start to think, in, think about in terms of, of product placement because even... People who are doing documentaries now as well, where you don't have a lot of actors and staff and stuff like that in there, um, and, you, and you're using stock footage, could still be a perfect time to, um, you know, get one of these bottles and you film a couple of really creative angles, and you can throw that and build that part, of, you know, build it part of in your story. And I think that's important because uh, relying on the revenue uh, shares with these VOD platforms, they just change the game. I mean, it's basically went from 12 cents to possibly one cent if you can't keep, you know, your CERs up. So, not an easy thing to do. And I know a lot of great filmmakers that have that have incredible, incredible films, and they're they're averaging like a 35 percent on their CER. So, you can't win on one angle. You got to have yourself across the board. You know, you've heard before have a diversified portfolio and in film it's definitely no different you know get your product placement sponsors uh get some good deal and, and of course marketing marketing is key as well but marketing is only going to be that that you know initial push after that you know it's good it's going to live on borrowed time for a little while but look uh, some really effective ways of, of product placement and sponsorship because you really can involve so many different brands out there uh, just go on Instagram as well and just type in, you know, mixed drinks or, or sports drinks or something like that. They always have a nice budget, you know, and, and do a scene where, you know, your actors are coming out of a gym or something and drinking that sports shake. So good luck with it. If you have any questions, you know, I'll answer questions, you know, just uh, whatever it is, especially with product placement. I'll, I'll try to answer it as quick as I can. And do me a favor and like uh, and subscribe to the channel so I can continue to try to give my knowledge out there to filmmakers across the board and I do appreciate everyone sending me emails and questions and stuff like that uh, that was one question that uh, that came up yesterday so I thought I'd do a video on it but uh, lights camera action get the filming do it